I like people watching. If you pay attention, you can actually learn a lot. There's a skill set involved. In this video, I'll cover a few different approaches and also touch on a little neuroscience. Then, hopefully, answer the big question. Why are fat people disgusting? The most fundamental kind of people watching is risk assessment, and that's an entire topic on its own. Right now, we'll just deal with four styles. The mirror, detective mode, fact finder, and radiance. The mirror. Clear your mind and just watch what unfolds with complete detachment, like you're viewing everything from a great distance, physically and emotionally. Imagine a perfectly still lake. It reflects the birds that fly overhead without reaching for or clinging to them. Detective mode. Your mission? Look for clues, large and small, and collect them like puzzle pieces. Assemble them in different ways and see if you can come up with a coherent story based on the info you gather. Look at a person's physique, clothing, style, facial expression, and movement. Who are they with? How are they relating to each other? Are there any themes? Is anything incongruous? Can you make any inferences? Try to invent several different stories. Fact Finder. Similar to detective mode with one key difference. Note everything, but separate stories from facts. Catalog information like you're going to give a description to the police. No feelings, no opinions, just neutral facts. This is actually a lot tougher than it sounds and you'll probably realize how often you color the world with your own subjective judgments. Try it. You'll get a lot of insight into how your own mind works. Radiance. Silently wish everyone well. Think something like, I hope your day gets easier, or offer a small prayer. My go-to is, it's good to see you. Shine positive energy on everyone. Yes, everyone even those who are broadcasting darkness. The world's full of really fucked up people with serious problems who aren't dealing with them very well. When I run into that, I think, whatever's going on, I hope you figure it out and find peace. Zap them with some good vibes. This doesn't come naturally to me, but it's a valuable thinking paradigm, so I continually work on it. Okay, cool. So what does this have to do with anything? Well, if you're playing in fact finder mode, you'll probably notice the words you use to describe overweight people are harsh. And if you're tuned into yourself, you'll likely notice a twinge of disgust. Shocking as it seems, fat phobia really is kind of a thing, but it's totally different than what most people think. Disgust is hardwired into humans. Aversion to pathogens is a useful evolutionary tool. This is fear of contagion. No one wants to catch cooties. It's all very complicated when you consider genetics, epigenetics, culture, biochemistry, and neurology. To simplify things, researchers have created different categories. There's core disgust, which relates to personal sensory experiences, social disgust, meaning sensitivity to other people's disgust, and ethical disgust, which covers moral judgments. The key thing to know is that all of them get processed in the same area of the human brain, the insular cortex. The insular cortex has a number of complex functions, including sensory awareness, risk assessment, motor control, and processing emotions, including how you feel about gross stuff. The other brain structure we'll need to look at is the amygdala. The amygdala is the center of aggression, violence, and fear. And the amygdala has a hair trigger. Have you ever jumped and then realized you were looking at a leaf, not a spider? 
That's because potential threats take a shortcut through the normal layers of visual processing and fire directly into the amygdala before you even register what you're seeing. These two parts of the brain, the insula and the amygdala, share information back and forth. So when you see something that's sufficiently weird or that indicates a possible contagion, whether the threat is real or not, you instantly feel put off and combative. What's more, humans specialize in thinking symbolically. We don't even need to experience a stimulus in order to have a response. Brain imaging studies show that sickening pictures cause the same reaction as personal experience. In fact, just thinking about something gross lights up the same neurons. Again, all of this is hardwired. It's triggered by people who act inappropriately, people who are asymmetrical, people who look sick, and that includes people on the extreme ends of the weight spectrum. Since 70% of all Americans are either overweight or obese, they get the most negative attention. The same pattern of intuitive negativity shows up in all groups of people all over the world. Before you sit on the high commode of judgment and shit on anyone else for being fatter than you, reflect for a minute. I guarantee there's something in your life that's not squared away. And if you had to wear all of your problems and failures on the outside for everyone to see, you'd look like a fucking mess. I know I would. There's an old piece of wisdom that goes, you're not responsible for your first thought, but you are responsible for the next one. So instead of rolling through life on autopilot, remember we can all choose to cultivate more skillful attitudes and behaviors. All right, I thought it was an interesting topic, so I figured I'd share what I learned. And that about covers it. Be excellent.